I'm now joined by the musician Rocky Downey. It is such a pleasure to be with you. I mean, your music is huge globally. You've been nominated, you know, for the Grammys like three times. You're also a UN Goodwill Ambassador. So tell me a little bit about how you've used the power of music to build bridges between Africa and the West. Well, for me, um, you know, music has always been um, a great instrument to create connectivity and also really be able to create inspiration, you know. Mm -hmm. And as an African, too, music has always been part of our, you know, social fabric and social structure, you know. So I always believe that, you know, since music is a conversational tool for Africa, it's also a means by which you can be able to incite agreement, not only within the continent, but also without of the continent. So. As a musician, I've recognized that power, and also during, uh, you know, I utilize my like my concerts and then also offstage uh, opportunities, you know, to amplify the the greatness of the continent, the strengths of the continent. At the same time, to try to connect with people of African descent too, who have had the yearning to to connect with Africa culturally. So, it's given me the opportunity to serve as the bridge because I have a deep understanding of audiences out there and a deep understanding of the continent. And so I'm able to create like a, a space of agreement. And that's how I utilize the art, you know. And it's really uh, nice to see now, you know, so many places that you go into here in the US or wherever you're traveling, Afrobeats is a big thing. Yes. You know, so African music is spreading and people are identifying with it. And for a lot of them, it's their first entry point yes. to the continent. Yes. And so it's, it's really amazing to see yes, that Yes, so it's, it's really an exciting time. And then also, you know, before Afrobeat, you know, you had, you know, the music has been building for a long time, you know. Organizations and festivals like WOMAD were all created to honor African music. And you had, even from the times of Miriam Makiba, African yeah, music, making <laughs> yeah, great connections, you know. So the digital age provided an, an opportunity to, to, for peer-to-peer -peer connection from the continent to audiences around the globe. And I think that it gave the opportunity for audiences outside now to go beyond record companies' curation to directly access the music. So it's a new golden era for the sound. And Afrobeat is kind of like the current modern uh, variant of African style, but it's also built upon incredible history of, and wealth of African music. And I feel that it is now opening the ears of the world uh, to Africa, but then they're going to also discover that it's really a continent of, you know, thousands of years of musical innovation and riches, and I think it's going to transform the world in many ways that, you know, it's not even obvious right now culturally. Yeah, yes. I mean, music and culture has so much, it's such an inspirational yes. power. This is your second Gabby conference. We were both yes. here at the last one. Yes. Last year, there was a lot of talk about shifting the narrative. Yes. Do you think that you've seen a shift? Well, I think that the shift is in terms of the volume of the conversation. But when it comes to substance as to real shift, I think that that is something that is gradual because Shifting the narrative is also, sh you have to shift the mindset to the person and then the perception of Africa. You know, the old perception was this place that was hopeless. You know, this place that, despite the fact that we who lived on the continent knew the power of the continent. Mm -hmm. But immediately you, you, you move beyond the narrative that you hear is different, you know. But we have now um, digital tools we have a youthful population that is well educated, if even not geographically traveling to other places through the, the power of the internet and the power of media, they've been able to have knowledge that at first was not readily available to them. So now you're seeing like a recrafting of what the identity of Africa is. And for me, the, the, that opportunity also comes with certain responsibility. Yeah because the responsibility has to be in ways that the new form of African that we, we formulate in, in this narrative is not an African that is becoming a Western uh, copy 
of Africa. They have but to be true to their it has, You have to be true. It has to be the real identity because the world itself is yearning for something new. And I think that once we are able to infuse that with that sense of cultural authenticity, it will be also a wellspring too for the world to, to come and tap into. And I feel that culture is our biggest asset, even more than all our gold and all our resources. You know, and we need to tap that, develop that, uh, put it in a way that represents this generation, but also in a way too that the world can relate to. You know, when yes. we talk about the world and yes. then relating to Africa, if yeah. you look at just the events of the past few months, you know, we have unfortunately seen uh, a few coups, you know, yes. which isn't great. And obviously Africa is 54 countries. What yes. happens in a couple of them isn't everywhere. Yes. But there is a lot of youth unemployment. There's yes. lots of good stories too. Yes. But how are you using music and your role as a UN Goodwill Ambassador to kind of unite the continent yes. and to really uh, inspire hope amongst the young people? Well, you know, the thing is that um, I've always believed that when uh, leadership, uh, when there's transparency, when there's opportunity, when there's also um, the uh, inspiring the youth and equipping them with the right tools uh, for bringing themselves, being, you know, being appreciative of who they are and also a pathway for them to, to create prosperity for themselves, you know, it's a win-win situation for leadership to focus on that. Um, and for me, as a Goodwill Ambassador, what I try to do is really instill this, self of, uh, this sense of identity mm -hmm. and this sense of pride and this sense of also um, the environment and the land, you know, we have to be proud of our land. We have to be proud of this uh, Africa that has the ability to, you know, has all every resource, you know, even known and unknown resources. Um, you know, if when you think of even cell phones, you know, coltan come, you know, mostly from uh, Africa. You know, uh, you know, lithium for batteries for the whole kind of renewable energy world is coming from Africa. You know, everything is coming from Africa, but. How are we also harnessing the youth to understand that we have this and they need to um, find the skill set yeah. you know, to be able to embrace all of this and also be in the leading role to push this. And that requires investment. And that requires also attention of leadership to equipping the youth of this, you know, in terms of this opportunity. So what I try to do is that through my music and also my advocacy, and my, um, my foundation, which focuses on youth leadership, I try to you know, uh, instill a sense of uh, uh, moral discipline because I feel that you know, we have a crisis of leadership when it comes to corruption and all of that. Mm -hmm. So we need a youth population too that is primed to be transparent and also have a certain inbuilt moral compass. In addition to that too, um, you know, taking care of our environment, creating sustainable models too that can help the youth to transform into agriculture, which has been the foundation of most of us, you know, but we always see it as like, um, you know, a vocation of our fathers and something yeah. that, you know, youth, but using, uh, telling them that many countries build their power upon agriculture and at the same time to protection of our environment, and then also utilizing all these renewable uh, new technologies that will move the continent forward. So I utilize my music, inspire people, but at the same time too, I try to learn all of these cutting edge progressive ideas too. So I do workshops uh, through my foundation and through my talks you know, within the UN ecosystem and my engagement with the youth I try to bring all of this information, but in a, in, in a cultural context. Well, yeah, and it's yes. pretty admirable because young people need strong role models. They yes. need people to look up to. Yes. When you travel around as a UN Goodwill Ambassador, when you speak to young people, what is it that you keep hearing that they want to see from their leaders? You know, they just, they're just looking for transparency and attention, you know. Okay, so yes. then if that's what they want, transparency and attention. An opportunity. An opportunity. An opportunity. You know, transparency in terms of that they've just heard the narrative of the disappointment of leaders, 
leaders, you know, coming in and all you see is cronyism, you know, democracy becoming kleptocracy, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you have to belong to a certain clique in order for you to succeed. And I've heard, you know, you talk to many of them like, oh, if you're not within this, you can be able to do that. So that mindset, and many of them, it tends to be way hard on them because they don't feel like you can be able to work hard to break through, yeah. you know. And then secondly, knowing that the youth needs the support and investment. So the attention of leadership to that you have this, we are blessed with, you know, one of the, you know, vibrant youth populations right now. But how can we, and we can't just sit down and think that this will transform into power if we don't equip them with the right tools. So attending, make leaders making programs and investing in the youth. You know, so that aspect, which needs to be done, not as a political rhetoric, but in terms of action. Action. You know, and then the tools, the opportunity, the training, the new technologies. You know, I travel, I see everywhere new technology, new ideas. How do we leverage and also interface the youth to take advantage of all of these? these so these are all areas that I feel that the youth are very concerned about. And if we're able to listen to them and attend to this, I believe that we will put ourselves onto a platform where the concept of unstoppable Africa will now become a reality and not another buzzword for the times. So from the people who are at this conference today, for the, in the next 12 months, by the time that we're here again yes. for the third conference, what, do you, what concrete action do you want them to take? so that we can have some action, some change? I think that the concrete action that they need to take is in terms of understanding uh, the value of the human capital in Africa. And also knowing that no matter what ideas we talk, it's gonna take an, uh, a conscious, enlightened, equipped, and determined um, group of people to make it happen. So the human capital is primary. So programs that are meant to create training and equip people with the right tools to drive the change is gonna be a key factor. And then apart from that too, the cultural aspects too, which I feel that we're talking of development, but we're talking of development, I hear a lot of, you know, a lot of tech, a lot of all of that other stuff, but the arts and culture, mm -hmm. uh, the value is, when we talk of Africa, it's about art and culture. Art and culture too has to be seen as one of the most valuable tools because it's true art and culture that even people know about Africa. It's true and the arts and culture to carefully manage can be a source of great income, great tourism. People travel to places, tourism not to go and like literally go to a country because a country, you know, music and culture attracts people. And then at the same time too, we have to see that the art sector, you know, African artists, painters, the fashion industry, all of the creative industries are so vibrant. And we have so many diverse cultural intricacies and perspectives that I feel that can be able to inform, you know, and, and, and thousands of years of cultural R&D yeah. that can be an integral part of the development. So I think that we can craft something unique that is not based upon Western models, something that is wholesomely African, but at the same time to inform the world that there are new ways of creating value and the value and the resources are not necessarily what is in the ground that you dig or the technology or the AI technology, but is in the people and the arts and the yes, culture. Yes, the arts and the culture and the people. And I think that that I feel that is what needs to be focused and it will drive everything else. Is that going to be the subject of your next song? Yes, my next song is <laughs> it's always about people. You know, it's, it's always about people. It's, it's, you know, Africa is, you know, when, you know, we, we're about family, community. You know, and when you go to every African traditional village, you know, in the evening when people go to the farms and they come back, it's the gratitude of 
family, the gratitude of being together, the gratitude of eating together, the gratitude of being there for each other. And I feel that the concept of the African village is also the concept of a greater Africa. You know, so we take the family, we take the community, and we expand it in terms of embracing the rest of the continent. And once we do that, then we can be able to embrace the rest of the world. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.